This morning, I'd like to talk about the diseases which are related to the liver. Koreans have the most liver patients around the world. We have that much of liver patients. You know, we have liver virus. Because of that virus, we get infected. Our livers are infected. But then virus if itself, it doesn't cause the infection directly. Those who have those virus in their body already, even though those viruses come into their body, they don't get liver infection. Now, we have the numbers, right? Now, when the liver is infected, then the liver is destroyed. Then, you know, those very important substances, they are leaked into the blood vessel. Those substances are not supposed to be in the blood vessel, but then those substances are leaked. So we have, usually we should have the substances in our bloodstream like 30, but then it goes up up to 100 or sometimes 2,000 and 3,000. So when we look at the numbers in the blood, then we say, hmm, Mm, then we know how those viruses are acting actively in your liver or not. So we, we evaluate with the numbers. But then even though those virus, you know, goes to the liver, uh, it doesn't mean those numbers go up. Then why do we have this hepatitis? Now, I think we have to understand what virus is first. Let's say one virus came into the liver. Now, it means it's like a rat gets into a big stadium, baseball stadium. So even though this one little rat you know, went to the stadium, it doesn't mean that stadium will collapse. But what happens? But what happens when this little one rat goes into the stadium? Let's say 10. What about 10 rats? What happened? What happened to the stadium? Well, let's say, you know, you know, the baseball is going on and those rats are, you know, around. And then those, you know, audiences, they're like, oh, they'll be surprised. They'll be confused in a way. 
regional program is not going to function according to its own plan. Well, rats themselves, they cannot destroy the stadium. Let's say, you know, those rats multiplied a lot, then, you know, it'll be maybe, it'll make the difference. But still, they can't destroy the stadium. It is like the same way with this uh, liver virus to the liver. Now, what is the virus? You know, sometimes we say our computers are infected by the virus. We have a computer virus. Now, what does that mean? It means our computers, they don't function well. They work in a very strange way. I ordered, you know, this, but then the computer, you know, you know, responds differently. Why? Because the system is confused now. You know, computer programs, th they have one, number one, and zero. That's the order keyword. Now, virus, we say, we say um, they have the bad signals. You know, number one and number zero, they are the numbers. They are the ordered, uh, ordering numbers in the computer. But when they're confused, then we have the problems with the computer. Let's say, you know, our New Start Seminar 91 batch, you know, we've been working really well together. Uh, let's say we have no virus here in this place. It means there's no gossip, you know, around here. Nobody gossip around here. But let's say, uh, a, let's say a person with bad intention, he or she wanted to confuse, you know, this new start program, and then she or he started to gossip. Let's say, you know, there are two ladies up here, front. Now this lady said, this lady said to her roommate, you know what, the, the woman from Ulsan, you know, the woman from Ulsan? You know, when we went to the, you know, water factory, you know, there was a lady who walked along with Seng Lee. Remember, Dr. Lee? Remember the, the woman? She always sits there in front. And I think, I think something's happening between Sang Lee and the woman. And then gossip secretively spread it out. And then it'll be, you know, confusing. And she said, you know, look, look at Sang Lee. She, she looks at this, you know, Ulsan lady all the time. You know, take a hard look at Sang Lee. You know, I don't know personally, but then the gossip spread it out. So people, they don't listen to my lecture, and they, you know, count the numbers. Oh, Sang Lee's looking at her. Oh, this time, again. This is our infection here in 91st batch. It's confusion, chaos. So when the liver receives this signal from the virus and then function the function of this liver got confused the signal system got confused so that the liver cannot function properly let's say your T cells they need to take care of those virus in your liver. But then if you say if you have hepatitis or you have problems with um, liver, it means your T cells 
in your liver is not working very well. They're not working very well. So it's not about the virus, but it's about our T cells. No matter how many viruses you know, come into our body, it doesn't really matter if we have strong immune system. Our immune system can re get rid of those viruses. It's, it's no problem. So we need to try to boost up our immune system to take care of our body. But then, you know, you're not interested in boosting up your immune system, but then you want to get rid of those viruses with your own strength. We try to find that treatment more, then it is not going to work. Even though, you know, we take medicine, medication, which, you know, can get rid of those viruses, but then, you know, we will have side effect and we will have those medication effect so that we won't be able to get rid of those viruses later on. Now, we have some solutions, of course, but then they don't, they can't get rid of your viruses in the liver cell totally. We suppress this, you know, there are multiplication, but then we cannot get rid of those viruses perfectly. One of the medication we s call um, interferon. Long time ago, we used this interferon when we have hepatitis. Now, what is interferon treatment? Interferon spells I N T E R F E R O N. Interferon. When our T cells are healthy, they produce interferon because we have these interferon genes in T cells. So what does this interferon do? It, you know, let's look at the, uh, the name. In inter means interfere, came from interfere. Interfere means disturb. They suppress those viruses not to multiply or not to survive or live. But if you cannot have those interferon, then you know, you can't kill those viruses. So the scientists who found this, they decided to make, produce interferon. So, and if they inject this interferon to the patients, then you know, they will get better. You know, we human beings by ourselves, we cannot make interferon. Then they make this interferon, this medication, uh, through genetically. Genetically. Now, it means we ourselves cannot make interferon, but we are going to use the technology of God. Let's say Seng Li practices New Start very well. He's very healthy. And uh, Seng Li's T cells will produce a lot of interferon. And then um, they will take uh, Seng Li's blood. And from uh, Seng Li's blood, they will take that activated genes from Seng Li's blood. And they will take some bacteria, colon bacteria, and then they mix it with that genes. You know, those uh, colon bacteria, they multiply really fast. So the more they multiply, let's say one 
became billion cells, then uh, those interferon genes also will be multiplied with that number. So those colon bacteria will produce those interferon of Sengli. And then they, you know, gather them and then they, you know, make it and they, they give injection to those patients who are needed. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the patient himself, he cannot produce, he cannot make interferon by himself. It means his T cells, the interferon genes in his T cells, even though he has that genes, he cannot produce because the genes are turned off. Sounds like it's a great idea to transplant other people's interferon, but the best way is to turn on his turned off gene, interferon gene, through new start. Well, our way of thinking, our way of thinking, like medical part, we developed our own technology without knowing genes and genetics. And that's why we try to make this interferon through our human technology. That's, you know, we set that kind of goal. So, you know, we take Sengli's interferon gene and then inject to the patient. Sounds like, you know, it's possible. But my interferon, you know, every individual have all different kinds of interferon. My interferon and your interferon are all not the same. Our genes are all different. According to, you know, person, individual, they're all different. You know those fingerprints? Let's say a murderer, you know, commit a crime and he um, left a drop of his blood and then, you know, those police got his blood and they looked into it, they examined, okay? Okay, to find those uh, genes. So genes are like our fingerprints. And then they can find whose blood this is after they examined. So my genes and your genes are different. My interferon and your different, I mean, your interferon are different. So, you know, my interferon, if he takes my interferon, his body will have side effect. You know, he'll have pain, his body will ache all over when he gets my interferon from my body. So in many cases, some people, after they get interferon injection, they got weaker. So here in Korea, we don't, we didn't, we haven't had uh, much effect from interferon injection, and we don't have that kind of treatment. We don't use that kind of treatment here in Korea. Very interesting. Children. Oh, by the way, Americans, um, you know, they're stronger than Koreans, so. They have they have some kind of good results from this interferon treatment. You know me, I'm an internal medicine doctor, so you know I prescribe some medicine. If I you know prescribe this dose of medicine, you know Koreans are like, you know, they are like very exhausted. But then Americans, they are just strong, so we are very weak with the patients. What does that mean? It means our genes, our liver genes are very weak. You know, our liver, they, uh, they do detoxicate. So if the liver cannot detoxicate the medication, then side effect is greater. So it means Koreans have a very weak liver. So American pharmaceutical company, 
uh, the way they write down for the proper dosage, uh, it's it doesn't fit to Korean. You know, there are amirifrin and a lot of different kind of medication. That is all based on Americans. Let's say, you know, 500 milligrams for Americans. But if I prescribe 500 milligrams to Koreans, you know, Koreans will have like heart attack maybe. But then Americans, no problem. They're fine with that much of dosage. You know, all those medications, most of them, they need to be detoxicated in the liver. You know, any kind of substances, substances need to be detoxicated in the liver. But if your liver is weak, you know, it cannot detoxicate those medications and then you will have more side effect. Now this is the liver cell. That's the liver cell. And that's the nucleus. That's the chromosomes. And then genes are there. And then virus. The virus is nothing. It's just the wall, and then th those are the gene, virus genes inside. So what is getting in? Just the genes. That's its new house. It takes off its peel, and it just uh, the virus is is getting in the genes. It means you know those gossip came in. You know, remember genes are all the letters. So very strange letters got in. Very strange message got in the your own gene and then you know f that's why your ver the your your organs cannot function really well because they're all confused you know then if those virus comes in then we need to produce some kind of substances to kill those messages those viruses but then if you have some problems with liver like hepatitis or cancer or cirrhosis whatever it means uh, you have a bad function. Your liver cannot function really well. It means your t, t cells cannot produce those substances which can kill those prob uh, viruses. So chemotherapy can be very simple. Yeah. You can just turn on those cells, genes, which are turned off. That's genetics. Anyway, those injection like interferon, you know, it has nothing to do with our genes, so our genes won't be turned on. You know, you will only have side effects. For example, there is a there is a man and a woman, young man and a woman. And the man had the virus himself. You know, let's say this man, it means, you know, he had no infection. Um, his, you know, number, you know, those measurement was normal, even though he had virus in his genes. Some people can have those uh, cancer, vi I mean, uh, liver virus in their genes, but, you know, they're just like normal. They act like just normal. You know, hepatitis means those viruses finally declare that this is my house. Virus itself cannot multiply. So to multiply... Those virus needs to use the cells, to use other cells, to multiply to other cells and to other cells. Virus itself, without uh, outside of the cell, cannot multiply. So viruses, they use the cells to multiply. So virus, let's say the virus decided to stay there inside of that cell, and they then virus put the name tag out. This is my house. 
you know, T cells, they look into, you know, they always go around and check up those name tags. Let's say if if this cell is Seng Li's, then you know that's the name tag for Seng Li, the black one. But then T cell, you know, looked and you know traveled around, and then T cell realized that oh, the name tag has been changed. This is not Seng Li's house anymore. So, if T cells found that very str those fa uh, strange cells, then T cells destroy those damaged cells. And then those cells in the liver will be destroyed. And when the cell is dead, then they will produce GOT or GOT or GPT. Those substances will be produced as they are destroyed. So GOT, GPT, they say, oh, the numbers of GOT and GPT are increased. That's what it means. So the, the real reason that you have hepatitis So when the when the T cells attack those cells which belong to the viruses, they attack you know those cells and they die, and then you know as they die, they produce GOP and GPT, and then the numbers okay, will be increased. So two thousand and three thousand. It means you had a lot of damaged liver cells. So if you're a doctor, if you're a doctor, you have to do something because if the numbers are high, it means T cells are attacking all of your liver cells. So uh, doctors need to urgently use some kind of medication. You know, you start, you know, never uses medicine, but then you start just, it's just for a healthy diet and things. But the real new start is like, let's say you use a lot of dosage of medicine, but then you, you know, decrease and decrease the dosage, okay, use of dosage. That is, you know, new start. Let's just not say like, oh, I'm practicing new start. I'm not going to use medication at all. But remember, as you practice new start through the process, you know, your immune system will boost up and so you will decrease your dosage of medication and finally you won't use the medication. And you say, you know, as I start my new start, I just quit taking those medicine, doctor. I'll try not to think that way. New Star is not diet therapy. We don't eat food instead of medication. Now, those food you take every day are one of those proper environment. And uh, when the spark comes in, when you have the nice proper environment, you know, it'll work better. So New Start doesn't use food as medication. So when you have virus in your cell, you know, there are two kinds. Now, you you know, you look the same, you act the same, even though you have the virus in your liver cell. It means, you know, T cells, your T cells are not attacking your virus. They don't attack your, vi you know, those cells which had, which have virus. But then, if you have hepatitis, it means your T cells started to attack your liver cells. Now let's think about T-cell-centered idea. 
um, if your T cells are active, that is good. Only the problem is if the T cells are active, then you know you they will kill a lot of our liver cells. So you know that's a problem, but it's better for our T cells to act active. Well, it's a lot better than not acting at all. Now, those who have only virus, you know, in their cells, well, they don't have infection, they don't have hepatitis, but then T cells are very carefree. T cells, you know, don't take action at all. It, um, in case of immune system, we can say this is worse. If your T cells are too active, and then, you know, of course, your T cells are killing, you know, all of your cancer, I mean, liver cells, and then the number will rise up like 2,000 and 3,000. You know, and the uh, doctors, they, you know, they need to protect your liver, so they have to kill your T cells. And then you can, you know, sit down a little, so the number will be decreased. because those T-cells won't kill that much of virus. And then some foolish patients misunderstand that, ooh, because I take this medicine, my liver is getting better. That is foolish, very foolish. Remember, you're killing your T-cells. Now you have to understand the whole principle. If your T cells are very strong, sometimes we say strong and weak, and then strong and weak. What's the s what's the point of strong and weak? Sometimes we say strong means you're very strong enough to beat people up. But it's not like that. When you're strong, it means you are wise enough to make a right decision. You don't beat up people all the time even when you're strong. But those strong ones, if you're really, really strong, then you will compromise with your enemies and you won't have you won't lose advantage, but then you will embrace those enemies and you will make them on your side, to stay on your side. Now, T cells are attacking, destroying the liver cells. So it means, you know, T cells are attacking, you know, themselves. They have no right, they don't have, th they don't have the wisdom to decide which to kill. Those who are very wise T cells will be patient, will be very patient, and wait until those viruses are coming out from the cell. And uh, those T cells will kill only the virus. Then that is a good, strong T cell. Those smart T cells won't attack their own cells just because they have virus in the cell. Now when you are strong, when you practice New Start, those T cells will be patient and wait until those viruses coming out of the cell. That's we can say healing cured but that can happen only through new start these chronic liver infections you know people some people you know suffer from this liver infection for 10 20 years well modern medicine cannot kill those viruses at all perfectly But even though you practice new start, sometimes you can't make it. Why? Because because even though they, you know, uh, 
they are happy and they drink water and they exercise and um, you know even though their lifestyle is good <laughs> is good you know even though their lifestyle is good let's say their T cells are you know turned on and you know they kill only the viruses, right? So sometimes they take, you know, examination checkup, and uh, they can find that their viruses are gone. But those people have no idea why. And the doctors also can say, hmm, I don't know why. Wow. But let's say they started to fight, you know, the wife is very busy and don't cook. And then children, I mean, the husband is very busy taking care of the children and then you get tired sometimes and stressed, but then you have second attack. You have your virus, I mean, liver infection again. Now that happens when you don't know, but if you know, like new start, then your genes will be turned on and you will recover your health. You, ha you will have your antibody inside, you know, things like that. Yeah, still, like those who even overcame those hepatite, I mean, liver infection through New Start, yes, will overcome your hepatitis uh, liver infection. But those, um, if they don't, if they quit practicing New Start, yes, they, will, they can have second attack. Now remember, you can overcome your liver infection through New Start. I've seen many patients here got recovered from their liver infection. Now if you drink a lot continuously and if you're stressed, if you're tired, your liver cells will be killed a lot. Then uh, you will have cirrhosis of liver. What is cirrhosis? Let's say, you know, our liver is quite big. It's a quite big organ in our body. It's very big. Even though, you know, your liver has problems, you know, some cells are dying and, you know, T cells and they attack and, you know, a lot of things are happening in your liver, but then you don't feel pain. Why? Because your liver doesn't have the sensor nerves. So even though you prick your liver with the needle, they don't feel the pain. The moment the needle gets through the membrane, yeah, you feel pain a little, but then uh, once it gets inside, you have no pain. So even though you have cancer tum tumor cells there inside, you feel no pain. So your lung, you know, lung cells, as lung cells was well, as well. So lung cancer, uh, liver cancer, you can't tell, even though tumors are growing in them, because you have no sense, I mean, sensor, sensory system down there. Now, you know, your cells are dead, your liver cells are dead like that, like that spot, that like that marks. You know, when the liver cells are dead, then they need to be take care of it. You know, microphage comes, and then, you know, they come and they, let's say your T cells kill your liver cells, you know, and they kill them. And then microphage come and they come and eat them up. And then you will have empty spot. An empty spot. If you have empty spot in there, it's not good. Then some substances should come up and fulfill that empty spot and fill the empty spot. And we call this one, let's say, 
scar substance that's fibroid now who which produces those fiber fibroid material no fibroblast is everywhere in our body so when they're needed fibroblast is needed let's say you know those that's the spot where your liver cells are dead and you have the empty spot. And then those fibroblasts will come gather there and then they will produce fibroid material and then they'll fill that empty spot with the fibroid material. The nature of this fibroid material for example, let's say um, scar. What's the cake character? What's the nature of your scar? Let's say you're burned, you know, and your dead cells from your burn will be off, will be got rid of. And then your skins will get constricted. It's like the same way with the liver. You know, those scar spots will attract their neighbor, you know, parts. So, the more scars you have, it means the smaller your liver will be. And then the liver, the uh, surface, will be very bumpy. So, your liver will be smaller, and then your liver will, you know, be hardened. We call this cirrhosis. You know, Koreans, when they hear this cirrhosis, the word cirrhosis itself, they are scared. They have fear about this word. But it's not. You don't have to. You know, our liver is very big. Liver, kidneys, and lungs, you know, God, you know, made them wonderfully, like very big size. So it's like with the same with our kidney. Unless it is damaged 50 or 60, 70 percent, we won't know. It's it's with the, it, it is the same with the liver. GOP and GPT, you know, the numbers are all always good. Unless the liver is damaged 60, 70 percent. After that, you know, the liver will say, hmm, something's wrong. You know, Koreans have a, lo a lot of ultrasonic treatment or MRI treatment. Now, what are they? The MRI? They send electrical waves to the cancer cells. Ultrasonic? They send the ultrasonic waves. When they receive those waves, you know, that is the very hardened scar, and they around them, they are very soft, moistured liver cell. Now, these hardened cells got these waves from the outside. Then the hardened part, You know, when those waves hit the soft part and the hard part, the picture will be different. And then t uh, those doctors will evaluate, huh, that part, you have the scars. And that part, you have a hardened spot. And that's why we have, you know, ultrasonic treatment. When you're about to start to have cirrhosis, Through the picture, uh, you know, doctor is saying, hmm, yeah, there are several spots, but it's not that, you know, great. And the doctor will just say, you know what, uh, you're starting to have cirrhosis. But then patients, in case of patients, they think, oh, that's the final decision. Now I'm at the final situation. Because traditionally, 
we had this uh, we've had this prejudice that if once we have cirrhosis we won't overcome we won't be able to survive we won't be able to survive you know, and you also saw many people, those cirrhosis patients in the hospital, and they, most of them couldn't make it. So you have this pa uh, prejudice. You know, when I was in medical school, I learned that our liver can regenerate really well. You know, we have a lot of liver patients in Korea. But I realized that Korea has some very strange news there because most people think here in Korea that liver cannot regenerate, but that's a really wrong idea. Our liver can regenerate really well. For example, we, you know, let's say we have a case to transplant liver. Sometimes we transplant liver, the whole liver, or sometimes part of the liver. Let's say half of it. Let's say we cut the half of a liver, and then we connected other, you know, half part of liver. Let's say that person took my half of liver. Now, I have only half of my liver but right after I take I cut half of my liver my liver started to regenerate right after but myself I don't know and myself I don't know how to regenerate now you grow you grow I can't do that I can't control you know I just get operation you know I cut you know my livers got cut off from me. But five, six weeks later, my liver will have the same size before I cut off my liver. So our liver regenerates really well. But if you don't believe this, if you don't believe that liver generates, then our genes respond to meaning, right? Remember? You know what is going to happen to you. Now, we have to believe the Creator. If you only believe those statistics, you will be the statistic. Because according to the statistics, those cirrhosis patients couldn't regenerate their liver. Why? Because, you know, they drink and they overwork and they're stressed and you know, they produce all the free radicals and, you know, they always damage their livers. So, livers will get this message, message from you. Hmm, this person really wants to damage me all the time. So, you know, we don't need to regenerate here in this person's body. We don't want to regenerate here. So, your genes respond to meaning. So, those people, those patients will not regenerate their Liver. Well, if you don't know, that is good. But if you believe, if you don't know what is happening, what is going to happen to your body, that that's good because they will, uh, your livers will regenerate. But if you believe that your liver will not regenerate, then they will not rege regenerate. You know, when I was in medical school, I learned that our liver cannot regenerate and those cirrhosis patients will not regenerate their livers. But as I practice New Start, you know, we believe the spark of our Creator. Now, once Creator intervenes, then those, you know, genes will regenerate and our liver will grow. Our, you know, livers will regenerate. You know, what I think is very important because, you know, let's say some cirrhosis patients came and they say, Dr. Lee, can I make it? And I say, you know, I scratch my, you know, head and I said, well, well, uh, I saw many cases, you know, those cirrhosis patients couldn't make it. Then, you know, that patient will be very disappointed and depressed. Well, I tell, I let's say I told him what I learned. 
What I learned had nothing to do with the spark. What I learned had nothing to do with the beauty and the goodness and the truth. We only took the statistics. No, but I say, you know, I saw our brain cells regenerate. And I'm sure our liver also can regenerate. Or those cells near the scars, the no, those normal soft cells, will do something. You know, that's not what I do. That's what God does. Okay, let's regenerate. Ready? Go, start. And then, you know, He sparks our liver. Now, you know what? I can surely say this is what God does. Let's say, you know, our liver started to regenerate, but then if it doesn't stop regenerating, what happens? Your liver will grow continuously, and you will hold your liver all the time, and you will finally die. God is not a foolish God. I don't know what kind of size, what size my, I don't know the size of my liver, but then, God remembers the size of my liver. And then when it reaches to the size, original size, and God will stop my liver to regenerate. We cannot say these kind of things. You know, it happens spontaneously. You know, evolution theory is like spontaneous and randomly, you know. We need to understand this super intellectual beings, which is God. You know, we have to be interested in, in this, you know, scars in our liver. If these scars can be get rid of, me, can be restored then our cirrhosis problem will be, will be overcome. You know, I had this one cousin, very pretty cousin. When she was young, five years ago, I mean five years old, when she was five years old, she got burned. Half side of her face got all burned. Her lips, red. You know what I mean, okay, red, okay, very dark purplish blue. So every time I see her, I, every time I saw her, I was hurt because she was very pretty, but, and her personality also very cheerful. But then she had this, you know, deep purplish blue color, you know, burn. Two years later, I saw that, you know, scar got smaller and smaller and smaller. When she went to the university, by the time she went to the university, the scar was almost gone. So as a doctor, I was thinking, hmm, so scars can be disappeared. How? How can that happen? Even though I was in the medical school, I didn't learn that one. I, you know, learned our scars can, you know, happen, but then I didn't know that scars can be also gone automatically. At that time, you know, our teachers couldn't teach us because they didn't have any proof, scientific proof. So I was just thinking. And as I looked, you know, at her, you know, scars are the same scars. I mean, scars are the all the same kind of scars. You know, burn scars from the burn, scars from, you know, your cirrhosis. They're about the all same way. Well, the, ma it, the matter is the fibroid material. Now, those fibroid material is called collagen. I'm not so sure about the spelling here. I'm not sure if there are two L's or one L, but 
Anyways, those fibroid material, we call this collagen. Have you ever heard of collagen? Yes, I'm sure you've heard of it. Collagen. What does it do? Yes, when you have a plastic surgery, you know, you've heard of this collagen. And sometimes we take collagen and they say, you know, when you take this collagen, you will have like smooth skin. But I think that's all lie. Even though you take collagen, your, you know, skin will, will not be, you know, soft. You know, Koreans love to believe something. No, why then people say we will have better skin when we take collagen. You know, of course, collagen is a very important, you know, thing. We can also call elastin. El elastic means, you know, it's flexible. So elastin um, and collagen and everything is in our skin. Of course, collagen is a very important factor. If you take that important collagen, then your skin will get better. Hmm, that's a very interesting idea. Even though you take collagen, you know, collagen is a kind of protein. You know, bulgogi, beef, those are also protein. Bulgogin or the beef is absorbed in our body, not as bulgogi, but you know, they're all divided. Well, the protein itself, itself in beef is divided. And then, you know, peptide? And then amino acid makes the peptide. So those protein will be resolved up into amino acid. Now, we took the beef, but then we observe amino acid. Actually, our body absorbs amino acid. So even though we take collagen, it'll be as amino acid. Collagen, you know, doesn't go to your skin cells and, you know, will give you very smooth skin, it's not going to happen. So, you know, you know, commercials, they lie to us. Now, what is poison? Poison means you have more than you expect. So let's say vitamins, even though it is good, if but if we take more than what we need, then that can be also poison. You know, when I was in medical school, uh, we were very upset because of this commercial. We used to have those um, protect those pills which protect our liver. You know, to protect your liver, you know, our liver detoxicate. Okay, so if you take too much of something, that is not good at all. So please do not use or take extra more something, you know, like a ginseng tea or whatever. Okay? You don't need it to protect your protein, I mean, a liver. You know, when you're stressed, your body's stressed, you know, you will produce free radicals and that will damage your genes and cells. You know, sometimes your GPT or GOP, you know, got uh, raised up and they, 
you know, and the doctors are so curious why, because this person doesn't have any virus or nothing, but then why the numbers are high. And then they found later that, um, you know, these patients took some kind of very strong medicine, and that's why this liver is damaged, because, you know, it, it has a hard time to detoxicate. So remember, the spark is very important. You need to balance and regulate your diet and everything. Where was I? Oh, okay. So, you know, taking collagen, you know, eating collagen is not good. But uh, sometimes some people also have subcutaneous injection. Subcutaneous collagen injection. Usually uh, your wrinkled area, okay, your eyes, you know, that area. But yeah, that will work if you have this subcutaneous uh, collagen injection. You know, one of my friends, he's a um, plastic surgery surgeon. And I said, how long will it take? How long, I mean, how long it'll last? And my friends say, uh, three or four months, it'll last. The effect will last for three or four months. And they have to get another subcutaneous collagen injection. Now, so it is very artificial. Now, this artificial scar is going away. So, you know, after those artificial um, scar goes away, then our body itself will have this kind of genes or substance which can get rid of our scars. I'm sure God knows everything. So, Now, remember, those liver scars happened there just because they are needed there. Now, let's say you're burned, then you need the scars. Why? To pr protect your skins. And that you, your scars will protect your skin, you know, on their part, and then your skins will regenerate. And after they are regenerated, your scars will go away. So every scars had their own reasons to exist. You know, subcutaneous, those injections, through that subcutaneous injections, you have the scars. That's what I meant before with the collagen. But those subcutaneous injections are not, you know, needed. But, you know, they're made artificially. Then I was thinking, then, you know, can we also get rid of those genes? I mean, scars? Then our genes will also produce some kind of substances which can get rid of those scars. ASE means enzyme. So, collagenase. That is a kind of enzyme which can get rid of the scars. No, and I was thinking maybe doctors, uh, I mean scientists, might found, find that collagenase. So, you know, I typed Google. I searched in Google. Google has everything. So I went into Google and I searched for collagenage. And then I saw all the collagenage. This is scientists already found out this collagenage. So it means your cirrhosis, you can overcome your cirrhosis. Now you say you're stressed and your free radicals are produced and they, you know, attack your liver cells. In that case, you have no need to produce. Your body, you know, has no need to produce collagenase. So those collagenase genes are turned off. Means why? Because, you know, you need the scars there. 
So collagen agia will only form the scars, but not will not uh, get rid of those scars. But let's say you start practicing new start, then your liver cells will think, hmm, this person smiles every day. This person sings every day. This person is very good at dealing stress. Hmm, he's changed. He exercises and he has good diet and he drinks. Hmm. So you have like proper environment and that your cells say, liver cells will say, wow, he's providing all the nice things. And not only those proper environments, but then this person also accepts the spark. Hmm, beautiful things and, you know, good things and tr true things. And, you know, this person is doing really well. Then we really need to recover our liver. Because this, your liver cells and they, the genes receive this voice of life. And then your liver cell, you know, I mean, and then you will, your cells will receive those signals to regenerate. Then your scars will be off. And, ap you know, if those cell, those scars are off, then you will have the empty spot and your empty spot will be filled with other substances. Then you know that God regenerated your liver. So, if there's no God, if there's no God, then your liver cannot be re regenerated. So, healing means recreation. We have to understand healing with recreational level. You know, everything, the maker is the best repairer. Now, Creator created us, so the Creator will be the best doctor for us and best healer for us. So your cirrhosis is not a problem. So please, everybody, don't be depressed. Have hope. Not only cirrhosis, but also all kind of diseases which have scars. Let's say your blood vessel, brain blood vessel are damaged and, you know, oxygens are not provided and then, you know, we have some problems with our brain. Also with our heart, you know, those blood vessels are blocked and your muscles are not provided enough oxygen and so we can also have scars in our heart. That's hardened heart, hardened liver, hardened kidney, and every you can have those kind of scars everywhere in our body organs. Remember autoimmune disease? You know, T cells attack themselves, right? Attack their bod their own body. You know lung and kidney. Yeah, we can have those scars in all different kinds of body organs. I saw one of um, these patients, he had hardened lung. Through x-ray, we could see the picture of his lung. You know, usually our normal lungs, when you take x-rays, they're black. But that when you have this hardened lung, then these x-rays cannot get through. So uh, the lungs were like very white. Most of his lungs were white. So he couldn't breathe. Now this man was, mm, this man had a business, running business in Chicago, America. He was selling clothes. Now while you know, during his, uh, while he was selling his clothes, I mean the clothes, running his business, he was very stressed. Usually Koreans go to sometimes, 
you know, very uh, kind of poor, you know, town. They deal with, you know, black people and uh, Mexicans and things like that. You know, and they had a lot of bugglers there. You know, some white people, they, you know, still for fun. But Mexicans or, you know, black people, they still for their need. So anyway, he was very stressed because of those bugglers on the street. He couldn't stop them. Even though he called the police, you know, you know, anyways, they're pl anyway, they're poor people. So, you know, you're not so happy even though they get into the jail. So he kept working and working day and night. You know, he tried very hard to kill himself, another word. So, you know, his T-cells decided to cooperate with this guy. So those T-cells, his T-cells started to attack his lung. So he got really bad hardened lungs. You know, he took steroid or some kind of medicine which suppresses the action of T cells. You know, our T cells are made all the time. So T cells are, you know, killing, destroying his lungs. So even though he take medicines, you know, uh, those medication couldn't kill his T cells and so forth. Now, and then finally he got very depressed. And the doctor said, if you're like this, uh, you will have three to six months more. Sooner or later, you need to bring your oxygen bottle. So he called our office. He called, you know, but then he couldn't say, like, he couldn't say a whole sentence with one breath. He said, hello. <sighs> you know, he was breathing so hard. And then finally he came to, you know, this place, New Start. He realized the existence of God and the spark. And if, you know, God exists, then he will recover my genes. He realized that. He was very happy. He had hope that he could make it. So he was very happy. And he practiced New Start very well. And day by day, his condition got better. It was very noticeable. At the time in America, at Weimar, we practiced this for three weeks. If you keep practicing New Start for three weeks, then, you know, most disease will go away. You know, at the time we had blood tests, you know, we had, you know, treadmill um, checkups and before, of course, before and after. You know, we did that before and after, you know, cycle. And then, you know, three weeks later, they're totally new creatures. Actually, you need to practice this for three weeks. First week is like, you know, you need to adjust yourself into this system. And the second and third week, now you really go for it. Wow, this is wonderful. So if you keep practicing this for three weeks, you know, you will have different result. Kim sun and those two couples, they came here for three weeks. Diabetes and hypertension, they overcame perfectly. Okay. Now this patient, he was very touched. And he felt a lot better. You know, he said, you know, I could sing, you know, he said. You know, he said he used to sing tango. La compartita. 
you know that kind of song cha 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 you know that kind of songs he used to sing this kind of songs you know tango rhythm he liked that kind of music but because he found god here he wanted to praise god so he said please let me sing let me sing so we say okay sir He said, I want to sing him. And he said, all because I'll be out of my breath, so I will sing only one verse. I will sing just verse one. I will skip verse two and three. And he said, He sang this one. He praised the Creator. But then he couldn't stop. So he kept singing and he finished up all verse 3. After that, he was healed. He overcame. Well, now he lives in Atlanta. Now his nickname is Tango Bark. Cirrhosis. You know, even though you have a hardened brain, hardened lung, hardened kidney, God made a way for you to overcome.